In the previous video, I defined infinite sequences. I said they were functions from n to r. As functions which are unbounded, I can ask for their limit. The sequence just keeps on going. There are more and more numbers. So what is the limit of the terms? Where is the sequence going? The statement that the limit of a sequence as n goes to infinity is l means that, as n gets larger and larger without bound, the terms get closer and closer to l. Similarly, the statement that the limit is infinity means that the terms also get larger and larger without bound. This is the same definition as for real number functions before, but now the functions have the domain of whole numbers, not all real numbers. Other than that fact, everything about limits is going to work the same. The limit laws still apply with the same rules about the limits of sums, differences, products, and quotients. And if the limit L exists, I'm going to say the sequence is convergent. Otherwise, if the limit is infinity or otherwise doesn't exist, I'll say that the limit is divergent. Let me start with some examples. The limit of n squared as n goes to infinity is infinity. As n gets larger and larger, n squared likewise gets larger and larger without bound. The limit of 1 over n as n goes to infinity is 0. As n gets larger and larger, the reciprocal gets smaller and smaller, since I'm dividing by larger and larger numbers. For limits of this type, asymptotic analysis will still work. In fact, asymptotic analysis will be a large part of these last three weeks of the course. The last limit has a highest order term n in the numerator, and highest order term n squared in the denominator. The denominator has the higher asymptotic order, so this limit must be zero. There are a few new things that are possible with limits of sequences. This limit may not work if r were any real number. This exponential isn't always defined, or at least not easily defined. However, this limit does work for any natural number, since a natural number exponent is more easily understood. There is a tension in this limit. The piece inside the bracket wants to go to 1, and 1 to any power is just 1, and this may imply that the limit wants to go to 1. However, the exponent outside the bracket is getting larger and larger, and the number inside the bracket is larger than 1, and higher and higher powers of any number larger than 1 wants to go to infinity, therefore maybe the limit will diverge to infinity. Well, strangely, the limit balances out somewhere in between, and this limit turns out to be precisely the number e, the special exponential base. I'm not going to prove it here, but this limit can be taken as an alternative definition of this special number e. Most limits of sequences will be done by asymptotic analysis. That technique is unchanged from before, so I'm not going to do many examples. However, there are some new ways to solve for limits, particularly for recursive sequences. Let me demonstrate that here. The ratio of Fibonacci terms, which I talked about, has a recursive definition that says each number in the sequence is 1 plus the reciprocal of the previous. a n is 1 plus 1 over a n minus 1. When I have a recurrence relation, this equation is true for all members of the sequence. Well, therefore, the equation is also true when I take the limit. And using the limit laws on the right, I can move the limit into the denominator. And when I look at these two limits, they are both limits of the sequence. One just starts a step behind. Well, starting a step behind doesn't matter for the limit. So these are just both the limit of the sequence. Let me give that a name. Let me call that the Greek letter phi. Now I have an equation for phi, which is an equation for the limit. In general, if there is a limit to a recursive sequence, this kind of technique will give an equation for that limit. And now I'm going to try and solve the equation. This is now just an algebra problem. I multiply both sides by phi to clear denominators. Then I group everything to get a quadratic. I use the quadratic equation. I get two values. I'm going to discard the negative. The terms of the sequence are always positive, so there's no way to approach a negative number. Therefore, the limit of the ratio of the Fibonacci terms is this number, 1 plus root 5 over 2. This is, in fact, a famous number. This is called the golden ratio, and phi is the usual character to represent it. The fact that the Fibonacci terms approach the golden ratio is one of the interesting behaviors of that famous sequence. 